Hey y'all, it's Lisa with Our Gray House and I'm back, Jessie. So I have been MIA since early December because I got COVID-19. Despite sanitizing, wearing my mask everywhere I went, keeping my distance, not going to any family functions, I got COVID-19 and I actually had double pneumonia. I was in ICU and I almost didn't make it but through everybody's prayers, love and support and a merciful God, I made it. So um, I was excited to get back into crafting, but those that are COVID-19 long haulers will know and understand the fatigue still carries on even after you come home. I was, um, I was on oxygen when I came home. I'm off of it now. I saw my pulmonologist and he said it was okay if I got off the oxygen, but I still get, my energy drains pretty quickly. So still have to take rest times. I also have to take naps during the day, um, at least one and so yeah but I'm back I'm excited to get back into crafting and today I am calling it hi five Friday because I'm gonna be showing you five different crafts that are pretty easy one is a little tedious and one I would kind of call a specialty craft because it's chalk couture when I show you the craft I'll explain you can get these items from the Dollar Tree or the dollar store as well I think I've talked long enough so let's get crafting I wanted to come up with a different storage thing for the cat toys. Right now the cat toys are in this. As you may have noticed, I rearranged my craft room. So I wanted to, I needed this for something else. So I'm like, well, I've got this. I've got some nautical rope. Let's just kind of wrap it around, you know, dippity doo dah, and create just like another cute thing. And so that's what we're gonna do today. I don't like leaving the tag on even if it's going to be like not really seen i don't know i just don't like doing that y'all ever watch rachel ray, ray by the way um she has like that little bowl that she puts her trash in well that's what i do too what i like to do when i start off is cut the twine or the rope or the jute whatever you're using cut it off kind of at an angle so that there's not uh, it's a little bit thinner i guess you could say and that way it'll be more level when you're going around or at least that's my hope so i'm going to put a little bit of glue just right at the base to get us started and that's kind of just to get us started and i'm going to keep the basket on the ground because I want it to make I want to make sure that the first line that I do is pretty even and I want to make sure I'm not like going where it's going to make it loppy, lop, lopsided I was going to say loppy lopsided or wobbly or anything like that so now at this point I'm just going to start wrapping and like I said put some dots of glue as I'm going but just not I don't have to put as much glue basically so now I've covered the entire bucket in twine and it's not perfect because there's like, you can still see the, the rim there. Don't want to do any more to it because again, it's just holding cat toys. It's not like it's <laughs> holding a national treasure. Um, although my cats are my treasures, but I'm going to just trim up this one, this side first. Cause look how, see, that's just all frayed and just, I don't know. This is my little cat toy basket. It's got the cat toys inside. Now, from this angle, I think it looks fine. But as you turn it, see this this type of nautical rope frays so much, I say worse, so much worse than the other nautical rope. And I just, I really don't like that, but you know, wouldn't consider it necessarily a project fail, but look, see it's starting to come up on the bottom. So I'm gonna have to re-glue that. But overall, it's just gonna be sitting <laughs> in the corner just like that. So you won't really notice the flaws. Y'all know I love a tear tray. I love tear tray decor, especially if it's like a mini version of something or um, what I call like a baby version of it. So I went, when I was at the Dollar Tree, saw these calendars, you've seen me use them before. If you see any like this, snag them because you can use them for so many cute projects and they really come in handy. So on the back, they have a preview. I've already cut out the two that I wanna to use today and I'm just gonna glue these Jenga blocks together. 
like so, like that. And then I'm going to glue, carefully, these signs to the front. And I'm gonna cut these just a little bit smaller than the Jenga blocks because the Jenga blocks do not, the sign is bigger than the Jenga blocks. So I'm gonna need to cut down just a little bit more than that. And then I might try my hand at distressing the edges. I don't know, but let's get this glued together first. I'm gonna use hot glue, but I'm just gonna use a little dab. I don't wanna use too much because then it creates a gap, which is not necessarily a bad thing but it's not what I'm needing or wanting for this. I'm gonna make sure that they're even Steven and then add some glue to this one and again trying to drag a thin line. I need one of those sure bonder ones that has the little needle nose to it. Now I'm gonna cut these out and like I said I'm gonna cut a little bit smaller than the actual picture because I want it to fit the Jenga block better. Now I'm just making sure that I don't have to trim it anymore and I don't mind that a little bit of the block is showing through. I just want to make sure that um, it's not overhanging too much. If you're gonna use hot glue to do that, you, you gotta be lickety split quick to get that down so it, it stays. If it's a little crooked, I don't care so much about that. See, that worked. So now, so I thought about distressing this with some distressing ink, but I don't have any of that. I could go in with like a brown or even just some of this black and just kind of dry brushing it on, which I may do that, but um, I also kind of want to just see what it does when I sand it down. Oh, you know what? Oh, good. <laughs> so one thing that I did not really think about was the fact that if the signs were like both up and they are this little cutie is so simple and it's gonna go great on my tear tray and it is reversible so i get two two different decor pieces or if it's just on my train you can see the back you'll have two different cute little signs to see this is another super easy tear tray decor idea we're just gonna be using these planks, one plank. It's the wood planks from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. You're gonna need four of the large popsicle, pop -tickle, popsicle sticks. You can also find these at the Crafter Square, although I don't usually see them there. I see the smaller ones. Anyway, not sure if I bought mine there or not, but if not, I bought them at like Hobby Lobby or something. And then, if you don't have, if you have good handwriting, more power to you. If you have a Cricut, awesome. Um, if you don't, here are some options for you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this black and then I'm gonna lay down the letters and I'm gonna spell, spell out hello. You can spell out welcome, you can spell out hey babe, you can spell out whatever you want to. And then I'm gonna paint over it with white chalk paint. And yes, I could just use paint it white and just use the black letters but I really like, I wanna take it a little extra step further and kinda of take it up a notch and make it a little bit more high end. And so I'm not gonna use the black stickers, but you certainly could. Or if you have great handwriting, psh, more power to you. I, I mean, I like my handwriting, but I don't, I don't trust it So for this project. So what I did was I measured in about how far to the center so that I know where to start placing my letters. And then um, I'm gonna paint it black. Hope that these letters don't stick too hard to it. And then I'll peel, I'll paint white and I'll peel the letters off. And then I will put the frame on. And I think I'm gonna try to paint these brown. But anyway, let's get started painting this Crafter Square first. And I am just using black paint. This is the chalkboard paint actually from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna let that dry for just a few minutes and then I'm gonna attach the letters and we'll do the white paint over it. I'm gonna set that right there and let that dry and then I'm gonna attach the letters, then I'm gonna paint it white so it's gotta be completely dry on the side that I'm working on. Um, in the meantime, I guess I can start painting the, um, the frame. Um, I'm gonna be using four popsicle sticks and what I did was cut one to use as a guide and then I marked the others, so I'm gonna cut those now, and then I'm gonna paint them. Okay, now this is pretty much dry, but I'm gonna, I can see it's still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna use the heat tool to kind of finish that drying process. Off camera, I cut the pieces, I painted them brown, I just dabbed on a little bit of brown, tried to wipe it off with a towel to not have such a, I don't know, trying to do 
I'm trying to get fancy with it. <laughs> but anyway, I think this has had enough time to dry. It doesn't feel wet. It's not coming up when I touch it. For me, a lot of times um, crafting is trial and error. I'm not like, um, I'm not like just like, oh, I can whip this up and it looks perfect the first time. Sometimes my crafts take a couple, couple whacks at it to make it work right. I had previously measured and the center is about two and a fourth inches in. H-E-L-L-O. So like the L will be in the center. So I'm going to put the L in the center and then another L next to it. The letters are not staying down super great. So maybe the whole they won't lift off very easily is not what I should be worried about. Oh, the center. I don't know if you can see that, but where <laughs> the green says hello, it's going to be... Now I'm going to paint it white. When I peel back those letters, it's going to reveal the black against the white. It's going to look like, wow, that looks so good. So now I'm just going to brush over it. So just so you can kind of see where we are right now, the first coat is pretty streaky. That's what two coats looks like, and I'm happier with that. So I'm going to let that dry. It's time for the moment of truth. So, oh man, I need to, I got tweezers. Yay. Let's see how well this works. It worked. It worked. Okay, I'll just finish. <laughs> just getting excited. That turned out really cute. So, last part. I'm gonna glue all of our little um, frame pieces. I'm liking it so far. Do I just need to leave it like this and lean it against something, which is what I think I'll do. This little hello sign turned out so cute. And I can see areas that I can improve next time if I do a similar project. But overall, I think this is gonna look great on my tiered tray. This vintage Tupperware container, I forget where I got it. It holds my yarn and I don't really have that much yarn, but what I thought I would do is make one of those boho yarn art stick yarn art things. <laughs> and so kind of like a play on macrame, but it's not really macrame necessarily because I'm not like doing intricate knots or anything like that. So what I was thinking was I would have it hang down not that far because I'm not trying to get crazy with it but if I did like even just 12 or 16 inches basically what you have to do is if it's going to be 12 inches for example that you want hanging down you need to cut at least a length of yarn at least like 26 inches, depending on the thickness of the stick or branch that you're using. So um, that way when you knot it through, at least, you know, the 24, the 12 inches will remain. So you're doubling it and um, kind of giving a little bit of an allowance for the thickness of the stick. So on the stick, I'm gonna put pink, light gray, white, dark gray, white, and then go dark gray, white, light gray, pink. And I don't know if this is all gonna fit on the stick, but that's what we're gonna try. What you're gonna do, one thing that I am gonna do on the pink, well, on the pink and the white, I'm going to do three strands together. So it's a little bit thicker. So I'm not doing these individually. The fuzzier ones, I'm gonna do two strands together, and the other, this kind of yarn from the Dollar Tree, I'm doing in three strands together. So that will kind of help. This is the project that I said was gonna be tedious because you're having to like put all this together. So you're gonna take your strand and you're gonna put it into like that. And it's not even, it doesn't have to be even, I'm even because I'm gonna trim it in a minute anyway. And you're gonna take it and you're gonna loop over the stick or the dowel and then you're gonna pull the string through. That's how it looks so far. I think that's how we're looking so far. And again, I'm gonna trim all this up. It's not just gonna stay all scraggly. Now I'm thinking, I wanna do the pink next. Get a little pop of color in there. Obviously I didn't cut everything <laughs> equally or evenly, I guess. Just kind of winging it as I do a lot of my projects. So I'm gonna finish up with the fuzzy gray on the end. This is how it looks before I cut it. And I think I am gonna try to cut it in a V. Uh, I can't. I don't know how that's gonna go. What I think I'm gonna do is just cut it straight across right about here. And then if I decide later, I wanna cut it in a V, I still can. But if I cut it in a V and then go, oh no, I don't like it, then I've already just kind of done that. I'm gonna lay it this way. Try to make sure it's all combed down. It's not gonna be perfect, but I'm just gonna use this kind of as my, you know what I need, my rotary cutter. 
it looks mostly even. I just took some of the extra dark gray yarn and kind of twisted it around. A little bit kind of braided it, but not really. This is how it turned out. This wall art, wall yarn art, boho piece. You know, I mean, I think it looks okay, but obviously these pieces were way shorter than really any of the other pieces. The pink pieces on this side are also short. So not super happy with that. Didn't get a straight line across. I think I wanna add some beads and add some little texture items, but just for a first attempt at trying something boho, which is not really necessarily my style, I think it turned out, I think it turned out okay. I'm gonna attempt to do a chalk couture project today. I have this little house shape that my friend Autumn sent me. She also sent me, I paid for it, but um, came as a kit. She sent me this, love brings us home. I tried it just a moment ago, it wasn't working that great. So, I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna put a little bit of this Craft Wise chalkboard paint. I got this at the Dollar Tree, quite a dollar. Just gonna put on some and I'm gonna spread it around probably need more, but I'm gonna spread it around and then I'm gonna wipe it off with a wet paper towel. Just kind of spread it around so it's gonna make it like, I'm hoping, kind of like a stain, if you will. I've done this on another project. I'm gonna put just a little bit more. I'm gonna wipe off a lot of it, so, or I hope I'm gonna wipe off. Then I have this little bit wet paper towel, just damp. And now I'm gonna dry it a little bit more with my heat tool. And I'm not worried about that it's not covered completely because I'm okay with that. I just need this to be dry enough and I'm fuzzing my transfer at the same time. I kinda like the rustic, primitive look. Also, that might be just because I'm lazy and don't wanna do it perfectly. But I don't think you should do craft perfectly, to be honest, because part of the creativity is just, I don't know, trial and error. But. We're gonna try again and however it turns out it's the way it's gonna be i mean i'm making sure trying to make sure it's in the crevices of the because the board's not completely flat so kind of not my fault on that but when i watch other people do it they don't they just spread it on and basically spread it right back off not sure why my <laughs> spreading is not spreading but now i did have to add some water to mine because it had dried out a little bit but I made it the consistency of like yogurt or whatever um it's a little thicker in that spot so maybe that's it maybe my paste is too dry I'm putting a lot on because this last time I attempted this didn't even look like I put any paste on the L okay and they've said that you can scrape off the excess and put it back into your jar, which I'm doing. I hope it works this. I'm gonna take a peek at the L again, just because I like to torture myself. Better, not perfect, but better. See, it still didn't do the N. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but that's how I'm leaving it, because I'm just gonna call it distress. This is how it looks so far. I thought the letters were gonna be a lot more crisp looking on there. I'm okay with it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bow to go at the top and just gonna make, what I'm gonna do is make two, just like little, like you tie a shoe, that kind of bow. And I'm not, the, I'm not the best at bows is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just gonna tie it like I'm tying my shoes, get the, get the bows even. I'm gonna hot glue both of these kind of in the shape of like a V. And then I'm gonna hot glue these two bows on top, trim the ends, we're gonna call it Gucci. But I almost feel like it needs like a little button or something right here. You know what? I tried a new project, learning about it, because I don't know chalk couture that well. So I'm just learning about it. And I think, you know, with the creative process, it all gets all the juices flowing, and next time I'll have an even better result. Here's how this project turned out. Like I said, the letters were not as crisp as I was hoping for, but overall, and from a distance, I think that it looks fine. And it does have definitely a bit of a rustic, primitive look to it. And I think it'll look nice in my decor. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any 
comments or suggestions on how I could have like this one, like, you know, needs a little help. Um, I think this turned out okay. I think I need to add a little like some beads or something to it. Maybe, maybe like braid some of these yarn pieces to kind of give it some more texture. Do you guys have ideas? Put them in the comments below. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.